Hi everyone, I'm Michael and this is Case Pool. Our case for today is Tanyada vs. Tuvera, but before we get to our case, here are some friendly reminders first. Friendly reminder number one, there's no shortcut in the study of law. Your preparation for the bar begins from your first day in law school. Number two, while there are a lot of case digests readily available in the internet, please, please, always read the cases in full. Doing so will help you improve your reading comprehension, analysis, issue spotting skills, grammar, vocabulary, and familiarization with legalese and legal jargons, just to name a few. Three, with regard to reading the cases in full, based from experience, there are professors who occasionally throw the curveball questions during recitations, like, who was the ponente? Or they would ask you to give the backstory of each party, like, who is the plaintiff? What is his relation with a person or with that person? Or some digests online contain poison or inaccuracies or falsities? So if you read the case in full and understood the case to heart, you won't be faced by trick questions and you'll be able to answer whatever question thrown your way. 4. If you're really pressed for time and had to resort to online materials, take them with a grain of salt, including my digests. And lastly, believe me when I say that professors can tell if a student read the whole case or not. Always come to class prepared. If for some reason you weren't really able to prepare, still, attend your classes. You may still learn a thing or two. The case of Lorenzo Tanyada et al. versus Honorable Juan Tuvera et al. as penned by Justice Escolin on April 24, 1985. The facts of the case are the following. Lorenzo Tanyada seeks to compel Honorable Juan Tuvera to publish and or cause the publication in the official gazette of various presidential decrees, letters of instructions, general orders, proclamations, executive orders, letters of implementation, and administrative orders. On the other hand, Tuvera contends that publication in the official gazette is not required for laws to take effect where the laws themselves provide for their own effectivity dates. Tuvera cited Article 2 of the Civil Code wherein laws shall take effect after 15 days following the completion of their publication in the official gazette unless it is otherwise provided. Hence, the present petition. The issue which the Supreme Court held to resolve was whether Tuvera's contention that publication in the official gazette may be dispensed with if the laws themselves provide for their own effectivity dates. The Supreme Court ruled in the negative, stating that Article 2 does not preclude the requirement of publication in the official gazette, even if the law itself provides for the date of its effectivity. The word shall imposes an imperative duty, the purpose of which is to give the public sufficient notice of laws which are to regulate their actions and conduct as citizens, without which there would be no basis for the maxim ignorantia legis non excusat, or ignorance of the law excuses no one. It would be unjust to punish or burden a citizen for violation of a law of which he had no notice whatsoever, not even a constructive one. The phrase unless otherwise provided refers to the number of days before a law takes effect. It can be shorter or longer than 15 days. It could also take effect immediately, that is to say, still after the publication. Executive Order 200 amended Article 2 of the New Civil Code. It now states that publication may be made either in the official gazette or in a newspaper of general circulation in the Philippines. The executive order recognized that newspapers of general circulation could better perform the function of communicating the laws to the people as such periodicals are more easily available, have a wider readership, and come out regularly, considering the official gazette's erratic release and limited readership. To be a newspaper of general circulation, the following requisites must be met. First. It is published for the dissemination of local news and general information. Second, it has a bona fide subscription list of paying subscribers. And third, it is published at regular intervals. This has been our case. Thank you for taking interest. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and stay tuned for more. I am Michael, and this has been Case Pool.